looks like we've now arrived to section three, SVG functionality. In this video, we're gonna take a look at using JavaScript to manipulate our SVG. We're gonna be looking at further interacting with JavaScript, SVG morphs, which is making one shape go into the next. Then we're gonna be looking at the common JavaScript libraries that are available for free online. And there are some that you can pay for. We'll be looking at the D3 language library, which can create shapes and wonderful animations. And at the end, I'm gonna do a creative summary regarding SVG as a whole. It's now time to check out simple JavaScript embedding. In this video, you're gonna explore how to make a startup event within your SVG to trigger any type of JavaScript library. Then we're gonna be exploring how to interact with your SVG items using JavaScript. Lastly, we're gonna look at how you should structure your JavaScript in an HTML document. And we're gonna be looking at some of the introductory JavaScript calls that is gonna help us out in future videos. I hope you enjoy this one. The JavaScript world is a very large one and as well as SVG. So here I'm gonna to try to keep it basic with some simple necessary know-hows so that in the future, you're gonna be able to get a lot more complex. These are definitely some strong foundations on what is possible on how we can use JavaScript efficiently in unique manners and we can get really creative here. So that's great. I'm gonna load up our example.svg the same file that we've been looking at since pretty much the starting of the videos. And if I just preview them in the browser, so you guys are familiar with this one, we have a moving circle, we have a triangle that changed color, as well as we have a stroke that is getting filled with a hover. Okay, so the first bit of JavaScript I'm gonna look at is an onload function. You're gonna notice I'm gonna put this onload function right at the top, right in the opening tag of my SVG. It's gonna be the next following attribute. What this is, is attribute that is gonna be triggering a JavaScript function. So in the way we could look at this as using smile to start triggering JavaScript, so I'm just gonna go and put a little startup event here on. So right after that, after my defines tag, I'm gonna put a JavaScript function. I'm gonna be opening and closing my tag. In my JavaScript function, I just have my startup event. In this case, it's just gonna be an onload. And I'm just gonna alert startup. And let's just see what that does. So I'll save, preview in my browser, and there you go. Right when I reload my SVG, it's gonna send the string of text startup as an alert. So I just wanted to show you as this is the first important basic for looking at JavaScript in our SVGs because this allows me to load up startup events, packages, event handlers, functions, a whole bunch of stuff I could do right away. So that's great. So I'm just gonna comment out this alert. And now we're gonna look at another function here. This function is gonna interact with any of these objects. I could either make it pick the rectangle, the circle, or the triangle. It doesn't matter because I'm gonna be using now JavaScript to target the CSS elements of my SVG object. So I'm just gonna copy and paste some code here. So this next function that we're gonna look at, I'm creating a variable called clicker. This variable is going to contain the document attributes for the ID that I'm targeting. In this case, I'm getting element by ID circle. If you'll notice, just like in the last videos, we had an ID on the circle. So now that we have that, I'm going to target the variable that I created, clicker, just up here, and I'm going to add an event listener and click. So that's going to listen for whenever I click on the circle and it's going to trigger this function. The function in this case, I'll just alert 
as clicked and close that and save so now when I go to my object and I refresh when I click on my circle nothing happens now this is where it gets a little unique for SVG so I know why it's not happening and I did that on purpose is because the document currently does not have the element ID of circle because it only exists further on down in the file but if I was to put the code at the end of the file here and remove it from the top you're gonna notice that I still have the same JavaScript function so now let's see what happens I'm just gonna hit save and now it's alerting my SVG element as an array because it's stored between two square brackets so that's great it's now working and it's sending the function because the get element by ID circle exists at this moment in time so now I'm gonna create a uh, instead of the alert function I added two lines here and I'll go through those I'm creating a variable and naming it change I could name it anything I wish here I'm gonna make it equal to the document get element by ID and I'm gonna get the ID of triangle so I'll just put that ID here on the polygon and then what I'm gonna do is all this right here is being stored in the variable called change so I'm gonna target that variable and I'm gonna change the CSS style dot opacity so here you just got to put your CSS rule in you can append your CSS rules so now if I hit save so now you'll notice if I was to click on the circle it's gonna change the opacity of the triangle so it's gonna change the CSS rule using JavaScript so I'll click on that and there you go you're gonna see my triangle is now faded out so there's a great way of using JavaScript within your SVG so this resides within the dot SVG and you're going to be able to interact with a whole bunch of stuff from your styles to your attributes it's really indefinite the possibilities here so let's look at one more example to increase our knowledge so here's a little bit about what I was speaking about this is another example and I'll just show you what it looks like we have a white square and then a blue square so within this example we can start from the top we're looking at a HTML SVG document we're opening and then at the bottom here we're closing our SVG doc and then all you all see is that I have a rectangle which is my outer blue and then I have a smaller rectangle here which is the inner white rectangle you'll see the color here is filled with FFF which is white so one really important thing to notice here is just like the onload function we have an on click function so this is allowing me within my SVG rectangle to create a click and that click is going to trigger this function the function in this case is going to be to target my document and get element by ID inner I have the inner rectangle and here I'm gonna set the attribute so here I have the fill attribute and here I'm gonna set it I'm gonna send it set it to black zero 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 so this example I'm not targeting the CSS I'm actually targeting the attributes within the SVG themselves so that's great let's just see what happens so now if I click outside it doesn't work if I click the center rectangle it doesn't work but if I click the blue rectangle it's gonna change the color of my SVG attribute and fill it to black so this is great stuff we can do all sorts of different JavaScript things here because we're simply just calling a function within our SVG attributes 
and we're changing the attribute to fill. So lots of good stuff. Now let's look at the last example for this video. It's going to be looking at SVG in line a little bit. So I created an HTML document and I just have a simple SVG circle. This circle has an ID, a couple attributes for the radius, the X, the Y. It has no stroke and a fill, and that's it. It's simply a static SVG. So if we go now to preview in the browser, you're going to see I have just my red circle. So now I have some JavaScript. So I'm not going to go into depth into each of the functions simply because we're trying to focus on SVG here and the JavaScript world is quite humongous. But I have three functions, a start, a stop, and my animate function. So when I click start, it's going to play my animate function. When I click stop, it's going to stop my animate function. And you noticed I put two simple HTML buttons here with on click function targeting my JavaScript. So now you'll notice if I go here, start, it's going to play my animation and move it along my X coordinate. And it's going to repeat that over and over again until I hit stop. And the brilliant part about SVG with JavaScript is that it stops in place. We have a live document here, something that is can be forever changing and it's quite easy to manipulate in how to make a fun, great web animation, among many other things.